I welcome on stage Antonino Stefanucci from uh, uh, the EIF and Andon Sitan from the EIB Advisory. <laughs> so Antonino and Ando will uh, present with the help of slides and then there will be a Q&A session uh, at the end. So just raise your hands and then our colleagues will uh, bring you the mic. Thank you. So thank you everybody for participating. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank again the organizers of this great event, Silvia, Ines, Tamara and Laura. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Antonina Stefanucci, I'm a mandate officer here at the EIF, and today I will be talking uh, about the instruments that the EIF provides to the market in the context of skills and education. So let's start, because the agenda is very broad and uh, not too much time. So as mentioned by Silvia, there is, uh, the focus here is InvestEU. InvestEU is the flagship program of the European Commission, expected to mobilize over 370 billion euro across Europe and in a variety of sectors. So, uh, as a matter of fact, InvestEU has introduced uh, a new thematic approach to investments uh, that goes across a lot of sectors. Uh, but today, our focus is, of course, skills and education. Why is this a focus? As we have heard uh, extensively during the panel before, we know that uh, the future holds new challenges. The, the works of the future are still not existing. Therefore, investments into skills and education are more and more important. On the EIF side, we try to provide support and enhance investments into education by providing uh, a new set of products uh, covering both guarantees and debt tax instruments, but also equity, which is a, a novelty introduced by InvestEU itself. The offer is also complemented by the advisory support that Andrew will be talking about uh, in a few minutes after my presentation. So let's start with the guarantee product. How does this work? First of all, let's understand this indeed, what is our scope and what our policy intervention. We try to um, enhance the access to capital and to increase investment into education and lifelong learning, both on the demand and the supply side of the market. How do we do this? By supporting um, four different categories of final recipients, being students and learners, entities investing in skills, meaning uh, SMEs and companies investing in the upskilling and reskilling of their workforce. And, it, and on the demand side, uh, supply side, entities supplying education and training, but also entities supplying services ancillary to education, like for example, student housing. So how does the EIF operate? As Silvia has mentioned, uh, um, the EIF does not provide direct uh, support to the categories I've mentioned before, but we work through an indirect modus operandi, as you can see from the, and why is this? Because we want to share risk and enhance investments. We do this uh, working, uh, providing guarantees to banks that then provide uh, access to debt financing to all the kinds of uh, final recipients I've mentioned to you before. And in the context of skills and education, and this is a great novelty that we have implemented together with the European Commission, organizations supplying uh, education and training. Those organizations uh, do not provide typical loans uh, to their stakeholders, uh, but they can provide other forms of financing in the form, for example, of uh, income sharing agreement or deferral fees. So what does this mean in practice for final recipients? Pretend I'm a student. I can either go to any bank that has partnered up with the EIF and ask for a loan in order to invest in my education. Otherwise, if I want to attend a university that the EIF has partnered up with, I can ask directly for support. In both cases, I have plenty of opportunities and it's very easy to get financing. How does the guarantee work? The EIF will guarantee 70% of a loan by loan basis for the, invest, for the financing that the financial intermediary provides, and this guarantee rate goes up to 80% when the, when the financing is to students and learners. The EIF will guarantee up to 25% of the overall portfolio volume agreed between EIF and the financial intermediary. 
This, sound, this may sound a bit complicated, so if you have questions, ask around, uh, ask later, uh, and look at the uh, terms and conditions uh, on our website. But what I would like to take for you to take away from this slide is that the guarantee is provided by the EIF and the European Commission free of charge. And why is that? Because it's said, as Julie said, and I think it's, uh, it resonates a lot, when we invest in people, we invest in Europe, and there is really a, a target from the European Commission and the EIF to enhance investments. Um, and we expect the financial intermediaries to pass uh, part of this benefit onto their final recipients. Uh, I want to give you also an example. So the EIF, among the many institutions, uh, is providing also a guarantee to constructor university that then in return provides income sharing agreements to its students. This means that students uh, attending the university can proceed with their studies without worrying about the tuition fees and the cost of their education. And then start repaying only after they enter the labor market and in particular only after they reach a predefined level of income. And this open access, again, as Silvia said, to many opportunities to students that otherwise would not be able to afford it. We move then with the equity product. So also in this case, the EIF works with, as a, with an intermediating model. The EIF will invest as a limited partner into investment funds, both that could be either impact funds or more traditional venture capital and private equity funds. Impact funds are funds that are investing into companies active in the sector of skills and education that are social enterprises, impact-driven enterprises, and social sector organizations. I'm not entering into the definitions, but Let's just understand that these are entities that are looking not only for financial return, but also for impact. But as already has said, social skills and education is important also for more traditional VCPE entities. And these are investing into companies developing new innovative solutions to supply education. That as we have seen with COVID, is an important trend in the European economy. Also in this case, I want to provide you with an example, EduCapital Fund 2. This is one of the deals, to me at least, most interesting in the EIF portfolio. Why? Because it was one of the first deals actually signed under InvestEU equity. Because it is a novelty for the equity investments of EIF to pursue uh, with such a focus the, the skills and education sector. And the EIF has invested into EduCapital Fund 2 with 25 million euros. So and it is also interesting, not only because it's investing into a niche market, what it is now maybe a niche market, uh, but also because it ticks uh, other policy priorities, and in this case, it's the gender equality in the VC and PE ecosystem, given that the fund was founded by two female partners, Mary Christine Leven and Lizzie Marek. So a great new initiative. And let me just say that this is now the biggest uh, ed tech fund in Europe. So, Investing in Europe in skills and education is not charity. This is a great opportunity for everyone, also in the equity sector. We move on to the um, capacity building investment product. This is a bit different than what we have seen so far. And why is that? The policy intervention is different. We are targeting, in this case, the financial intermediaries as such. We know that it is still an instant uh, market uh, with few incumbents, uh, many new actors that may want to enter, and anyway, investments that are highly needed. Therefore, we provide subordinated loans to financial intermediaries in order for them to develop uh, in-house knowledge, infrastructure, and new competencies. In particular, the financial intermediaries uh, can use this money that we provide to invest in uh, organizational capacity, operational capacity, and enhanced debt capacity. This instrument, uh, please be aware, is open for, to a wide variety of institutions, uh, going from banks to investment funds, but also crowd financing platforms uh, or education providers. So if that sounds like an interesting project, uh, maybe you are eligible and you can, and maybe it's worth to explore this opportunity. So I hope by now you have some interest uh, in this uh, <laughs> variety of products, uh, and therefore you're asking yourself, how do I apply and how does it work? It's pretty straightforward. So the first thing I would like you to do is go on our website, uh, check the information, uh, 
check what is what we're looking for and what documents we are looking for. And you can apply until the 30th of June 2027. Now, please be aware that my recommendation is apply as soon as possible. You, we all know that, unfortunately, resources are limited and we operate on a first come and first serve basis. So come and apply. Uh, if that is the case, uh, if you've done your homework and everything is ready, you can either send an email in case you want to apply for a guarantee or a uh, capacity building investment, or you can use our online form for an equity investment. Um, just at EIF, uh, we really want to support the market, support new applicants. Uh, so you don't need to officially apply in order to reach us out. Uh, if you need help, you have questions, want to brainstorm, uh, feel free to reach out to our investment officers. Uh, uh, people that are more on the back office, like Silvia and myself working with Commission, we will be happy to provide support. Uh, so once you have applied, what does it happen next? Well, the, our investment officers will start screening, screening the documentation. We may reach out in case further information is needed. And upon successful completion of the screening, we will move on to the diligence. With physical visits, usually, in order to understand better what is your value proposition, what is the team working on this application, and how to bring it forward. If that is also successful, we will move on to legal negotiation with our uh, legal officers and finally signature. And this is where the actual journey begins for everyone. So as said, a lot of information. Um, the first thing I suggest to do is, well, first, mingle with our EIFs investment officers here in the crowd, and I'm sure they're going to be the first entry point, and then visit our website. So we'll provide all the information you may need. Thanks a lot, and I leave it to Anja now. <laughs> My name is Anto Sietem, and I am part of the EIB Advisory Services. So I have tried uh, to be on and off from skills at the education domain I mean, during my time at the EIB, but always I'm coming back to, the, to this uh, topic and I don't know, probably it's my destiny. So um, once again, I'm, I'm proud to be uh, back uh, here in Brussels to talk about what we have, we have done in the context of the advisory hub. And we need to talk about advisory. Obviously, not everyone are skilled to get and approach and apply for funding from the, from the day one, but actually you need some, type, some sort of a support. So that's why actually advisory is there to support uh, not only the project promoters directly, but also financial intermediaries to, to upskill themselves and be prepared to, uh, to apply for funding. We actually, start, EIB started uh, providing advisory services uh, already a few years ago, actually under the, uh, the previous program period. Then it was called uh, European Investment Advisory Hub, but now as a tra transition to the, to the current program period, we are now talking about InvestEU Advisory Hub. So similarly to, uh, to the, to the InvestEU uh, financing, EIB together with the EIF is actually the, the main advisory partner for the Commission. So uh, together with the European Commission, we are, we are offering uh, advisory services for, for many different uh, uh, sectors. So. Uh, for first, I would like to just go through I mean, the main domains, what we are supporting, then who actually could approach us uh, to get uh, technical assistance support. Then I also dive in a bit more into the field of uh, how we support uh, financial intermediaries, and more specifically, what we have done so far in terms of uh, skills and education, but also what is the future for, for you. So. As you can see here, basically we are more or less uh, mirroring the same policy, uh, uh, policy windows uh, as uh, in case of uh, uh, financing. So um, uh, we have uh, obviously sustainable uh, infrastructure advisory. We also cover um, everything related to SMEs, uh, research, innovation, digitalization. But as you can see, we actually have quite a, a big focus on social investment and skills uh, window. And there we have uh, carved out and uh, secured the funding for specifically for skill education to, to um, support project pro promoters as well as uh, uh, financial intermediaries to, uh, to get uh, uh, support uh, from, from us. So we have a dedicated budget for that. Up until now, I mean, actually from uh, uh, grassroots level and uh, bottom-up level, 
we have seen limited uh, uh, limited interest in this. So anyone who actually can uh, can echo and, and go back to your home home countries, you see uh, either project promoters or or yourself would like to approach us. I mean, uh, please uh, feel free. Uh, so we are there to uh, to to help. Uh. So in terms of um, in terms of uh, who, uh, as I said, I mean, who we can uh, support? Uh, obviously, we support uh, direct uh, project promoters, uh, the mostly uh, uh, co corporates or uh, enterprises. But we also support work with uh, uh, public uh, sector institutions like ministries, uh, national promotional banks and institutions. But we also uh, support the infrastructure projects and uh, financial intermediaries. And here, actually, there is a direct link between ourselves and, and the uh, basically advisory support is there to promote uh, and support the, the deployment of uh, InvestEU uh, pro financial products. So how, how do we do it? In general, I mean, we have three types of uh, advisory support available. So <coughs> we start with capacity building uh, support. We have also market development support and project advisory. Project advisory, I guess it's quite, uh, quite clear. If someone has an idea, uh, but uh, their project is not yet bankable, so we can actually support them from the very beginning, I mean, uh, to, to, to fine-tune the investment strategy, to fine-tune uh, the investment plan, and then um, once they are um, graduated, I mean, hopefully they can also approach the uh, EIB group uh, to, get, to get funding. Uh, there is a lot of work to be still to be done in terms of market uh, uh, development. Uh, obviously, also today's event is actually uh, raising the awareness about the possibilities, uh, how actually we can support at the EU level I and mean, the, the local local initiatives. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, awareness raising events, but also uh, uh, more technical nature uh, interventions. Uh, we we share the best practices actually to, to showcase that actually there is a business case. I mean even in the skills education topic, which might not be I mean uh, so clear I mean for many out there. And we also do a lot of uh, analytical uh, work, uh, market research, uh, to just to understand what is going on in, in, in the in the Europe to support the policy makers to make uh, decisions and how to fine tune uh, the financing or any other uh, any type of support going going forward. In terms of capacity building support, we can offer I mean, uh, specific trainings, we can offer uh, product development support, for instance, for banks. I mean, let's say, uh, if we're talking about today, early today, we talk about uh, sustainability and climate, and obviously there's a lot of things, I mean, that even also the commercial banks have to learn, I mean, in terms of to, to provide such, such uh, funding. So actually, we also support the commercial banks to, to, to design, I mean, new, new products, I mean, to, to meet uh, the, the needs. Uh, we also, uh, yeah, we also have uh, launched I mean, several uh, uh, web and IT tools actually to, to go through I mean, the, the maze of different requirements. Uh, the, I guess the, the most uh, known one is a sustainability guarantee uh, product, I mean, uh, what the EIF is uh, implementing, but also we have a, a green gateway support available uh, for EIB uh, project promoters. So what what we have done so far in terms of skills education, obviously it's not a surprise, as I said, we have uh, participated and supported uh, several uh, awareness raising sessions. We have also done uh, specifically more technical nature master classes uh, where uh, EIF colleagues have provided uh, technical uh, know-how and uh, helped them and the intermediaries to, to, to uh, navigate through the maze of, of, uh, of, of uh, different uh, uh, conditions, but also um, we have uh, now recently just finalized uh, two market studies and later on, uh, bear with me, I mean, you will see me another, uh, and again showing up I mean, later today after the uh, coffee break, where I, where I will go and walk you through about the main fi uh, fi um, findings uh, regarding the, the student uh, lending uh, study we, we carried out uh, during the last year. So going forward, we, as I said, I mean, up, on, up until now, I mean, from uh, bottom up, we haven't really seen uh, too many uh, uh, interest I mean, uh, from project promoters to get uh, advisory support. So what we have uh, done together with EIF, actually, we are now developing a specific uh, advisory uh, a program for skills education financial intermediaries. Everyone who are approaching EIF to, to become, or they are already uh, the, the counterparts of EIF, they can benefit from this advisory program. 
we're still working on on the uh, in the in the uh, engine room, but uh, we hope that uh, this program will be up and running uh, somewhere uh, during the second half of this year. Then uh, and uh, you will uh, definitely learn and hear uh, more from from ourselves. But basically, with uh, this comprehensive advisory program, we will want to tackle both sides. I mean, f from first uh, starting with the origination phase where a new financial intermediaries would like to set up a new funding schemes to address skills and education, but also would like, would like to be there to, to support financial intermediaries during the deployment phase, I mean, if they face any challenges, uh, being them uh, monitoring, reporting, or, or assess, assess, assessing the, the impact. So we'd like to uh, put together um, this uh, comprehensive package, and, uh, and uh, you will definitely learn and hear uh, more from from us in the, in the future. So this is uh, very briefly about what I wanted to say in this session. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> now, is there any questions from the audience? We have received also a few questions online that I'm happy to, um, to spell out. But first, I want to give the, of course, priority to the audience in the room. No questions, so it means that you have been very clear. So one of the questions that we received, Antonino, is about... Yes, oh, sorry, of course. Can we have a mic? Alessandra Chirico, Chirico Consulting. Um, I have a question regarding the eligibility criteria. So who is actually eligible? And I don't want you to repeat <laughs> everything, but what about NGOs? What about what in Italy, for instance, is called mm -hmm. terzo settore, anti il terzo settore? I'm happy to take this question in my former capacity. So, um, based on our experience, uh, we see some of the terzo settore, in it, I mean, I'm Italian, so I know a bit the story, uh, as uh, uh, qualifying as social enterprises. Uh, according to the definition of the uh, European Union, of the European Commission. So um, this definition is uh, as very like, specific criteria. So uh, if the NGO or any other company um, uh, meets this criteria, then it can qualify as a social enterprise. And uh, just to um, clarify, we don't, of course, enter into the merit of assessing the eligibility of these companies. It's always the financial intermediary that is uh, uh, mandated to, to do that. But what we provide as EIF is the, uh, uh, indeed the eligibility. And on the social enterprise side now, quoting by memory, uh, the, uh, it's an undertaking. So we are talking about a... Um, economic uh, uh, entity uh, that has uh, the purpose of achieving uh, social impact clearly spelled out in the bylaws and then has uh, the uh, social, let's say, impact um, uh, on equal foot, uh, let's say, as a, uh, together with the economic or the economic value creation, basically, uh, that is proper of any, uh, any company. Uh, and also as part participative, sorry, I'm not, I'll never be able to spell that, a uh, form, let's say, of, uh, of governance. Now, maybe I'm, I said something not 100% accurate, but there is a specific definition. So in this particular case, when we are talking about this specific uh, uh, type of enterprises, we do apply the definition of the, uh, the European Commission. Now, how do this link with the skills and education? It links because if the intermediary is entering into an agreement with the EIF for the purpose of developing a portfolio of loans towards company that are operating in these sectors, then there are additional criteria that will need to be like, uh, uh, um, um, uh, specified. I'm happy to follow up uh, bilaterally with that. But I know by experience that when we are talking about terzo settore, it's mainly the social enterprises that is the corresponding category, let's say. Any other brave colleague? Fantastic, thank you. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Ben Wears uh, with the Bright Eye. Just a question about the, uh, I think it was 370 billion or so in fine, you know, that's, that's been put aside. How much of that are you burned through? How much of that is available? Um, you know, and uh, are there like additional mandates that need to be 
sort of approved, or is it actually there for, for folks to access today? Yeah. Of course, please. Do you hear me? Yeah. Um, so the 370 billion euros to be expected to, mobili to be mobilized is actually a, um, uh, an amount that is expected by the European Commission for the whole InvestEU, uh, meaning that the guarantee is actually uh, implemented by different implementing parties, and the AF is one of those. On the EIF side, we are one, actually the biggest implementing partner, but not the only one. At the moment, I don't know what is the uh, reach of out of the total 372 million. So, um, I know that the EIF is, uh, has currently spent more than 50% uh, across equity and guarantees of the amounts we've been entrusted with. So that's why we're telling uh, apply mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Uh, on the expected mobilized, uh, we have uh, a leverage target of circa 11 times, uh, meaning that for each euro that the, EIA, the European Union has provided, we expect to mobilize 11 euros uh, on that side, including capital from uh, private uh, players in the market. Any other questions? No questions. Maybe I can uh, uh, follow up on one of the questions that we received uh, uh, at the time of the of the registration. <coughs> now um, we hear now just you mentioned the progress of uh, uh, of Investeu. Do you have like any specific uh, updates on the um, social investment and skills window uh, deployment, which is indeed the at least on the guarantee side the uh, key uh, window to support this area. Yes, indeed we see that the social InvestEU has, has been structured across windows supporting different uh, thematic areas that we've seen. Um, the social investment skills windows has been one of the most demanded. Uh, we have uh, received a lot of uh, um, applications across the different products, both guarantees and equities. Uh, uh, it is interesting though to see that it is still an ASM market and our investment officers in the front office have been working a lot uh, for the uptake of the product. Uh, we see more and more uh, institutions applying and reaching out and I think today with the uh, upcoming signatures is going to be uh, really a, an example uh, of all the work and effort of the EIF in this sector together with the uh, private uh, stakeholders, but also the European Commission. Uh, on, in general, as I said, uh, in line with the remaining uh, windows, uh, more than 50% of uh, the window has been used, uh, and we expect uh, to use the majority of it by 20, end of 2026, meaning almost uh, 90%, mm. given that uh, there is a high demand. But this is not the end of our mission. I mean, this is really a starting point. And we've started with uh, Erasmus, and, it's, and this has been growing more and more across the years, and we will do more. And indeed. Please, Julie, yes. Uh, the microphone is coming, yes. No, I, I guess... Um, it's not functioning. Not okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess... Probably from from my side, what I would say is if, if you think you have a good idea, reply, huh? because um, there is certainly slack in the system, um, and this is very much a political priority. So we want to see good activities coming forward, mm -hmm. or we want to see. It, there is always, of course, the possibilities to look across the balance of the different windows or the balance of the different activities. That uh, you know, if we see that there are very good quality initiatives coming forward. And, um, <clears throat> and we would like to, to finance more. The, then that's always a, a question in terms of um, moving things around. But uh, I would encourage you that you know, th this, this is uh, very much a priority for us. Um, so if you have a good idea, don't be shy. <laughs> Thank you. As I mentioned before, there is no way back in the sense that also, I mean, the, the reason why we are here is also to reinstate our commitment to uh, growing our support. Of course, we don't do this alone because, uh, as you know, the EIF uh, is, uh, a, um, is uh, implementing third-party resources typically from the European Commission, like in this case, or from the European Investment Bank, also from member states. 
but uh, it's not by accident that the social impact and human capital is one of the four strategic drivers of the EIF alongside sustainability, competitiveness and innovation. And on this note, I would like to invite you to enjoy a coffee break. Ah, yes, sorry, there is another question? No, you want to, a comment, of course. Hello, everyone can hear me? Yes. No, just to encourage uh, questions really, not to have an ex cathedra uh, lecture and then uh, not enough follow-up. Um, we have not yet entered into a technical part of the event where we'll touch upon the topics that are due to our intermediaries or the implementation type of modalities. Mm -hmm. But there are a number of um, financial institutions that have not yet applied. We have discussed that you would like to apply. Institutions with whom we are about to sign but have not started the implementation. Ultimately, and those who have been implementing and have experienced certain reporting challenges, eligibility challenges, it is critical that you at the later stage reach out to Ando. Because under InvestU we have the first, for the first time an opportunity to allocate a certain budget and it has been allocated to advisory services. Now advisory sounds more like consultative or like mm. a, you know, big four companies or strategy advisory consulting, but it's effectively designed to help you through the implementation process. So if you need, if you need to design eligibility checks, if you need to identify which types of final beneficiaries could be or would be eligible and you're not certain, Ando will be your guy. And it is important that we reach out to him because if the budget is not used, if you will not be inquisitive enough and you will make your peace with certain uh, implementation issues and challenges, we will eventually lose that budget and it will be pocketed elsewhere. And therefore, I to, to also follow up on the comment from our, our partners from the European Commission and the question from the colleague from BrightEye, um, the overall debt or portfolio guarantee capacity is 155 million euros with the overall pipeline identified and pre-selected amounting to 100. So we're more or less at two-thirds of the available budget now. Therefore, if interested, apply because the budget will be gone in the coming year, year and a half. Now, I'm not pushing any of you, but <laughs> if you have any practical no pressure, implementation no. questions or comments yes. that you would like also advisory to, re to, to replicate in its product mm. offering, it's, it's a good opportunity to do it now. Otherwise, we'll do it mm. afterwards during the coffee break or after the signature sessions when we can network a bit more. But also, please don't hesitate to, yes. to interact, not only during the drinks, but uh, now because Otherwise, next time we're going to put you in a circle and uh, we're going to be asking people to, no, to really stand up and, uh, and engage. No, Thank you. Thank you very much, Zornimir. No, there are I mean, a number of EIF colleagues here, so this will be your entry point for, for today. Otherwise, of course, uh, there is the website that I indicated earlier on uh, to ask for uh, uh, questions or advice.